Place your bets. The governor makes her decision about sports wagering in Kansas. An iconic deli ends its 75-year run in Topeka. Plus, the Chiefs announce when two legendary QBs go head-to-head. And we catch up with a musician coming home to share his songbook. Good evening. Welcome in on a hot evening. I'm Ralph Hip. Welcome into 13 News. And I'm Melissa Bruner. Glad you're along with us. We want to let you know Highway 24 north of Manhattan has just reopened. It was closed about an hour and a half for a head-on collision. We do have this video just back from the scene. The wreck happened just after 4 p.m. on Highway 24, about a half mile east of Seth Child Road. Authorities say a car crossed the center line, hitting an oncoming SUV. The SUV's driver was flown to an area hospital. Their passenger and the car's driver also were taken to the hospital, that by ambulance. We'll provide any updated information on this on WIBW.com. We will. More information certainly later on tonight on the website and on the air. Well, uh, for either one of those, we're going to get you caught up on the air on First Alert Weather from Jeremy. Our final day in the 90s, right, Jeremy? Hi, Ralph Melissa. This should be the last time we hit the 90s for quite a while. Looking out on the radar, though, right now, we have a severe storm warning in place from Concordia and Cloud County right up into the western part of Washington County. A lot of Republic County in this as well. So it's a severe thunderstorm warning. And we could see hail the size of quarters with this and winds as high as 60 miles per hour possibility as well. So this is moving into areas like Glasgow, Concordia, Washington will be affected by this as well. And everything in the orange indicates a severe thunderstorm watch that goes all the way until 9 p.m. So as the night rolls on, we'll actually see this making its way east areas like Manhattan by 10 or 11 o'clock. Uh, Marysville about the same in Topeka, Emporia closer to midnight or maybe even after. But for right now, hail the size of quarters near Concordia, making its way to the north and east, and this won't be the uh, last storm. We'll have more of these throughout the evening. Your first alert, 8-day forecast. More details about these storms coming up in a few minutes. Jeremy, thank you. Get ready to ante up. Sports betting is coming to Kansas. Governor Laura Kelly signed a bill today allowing people to legally participate in sports wagering in the state. The bipartisan measure also allows state casinos to use digital platforms and create sports books. Venues like restaurants and nonprofit fraternal or veterans organizations also could host sports betting. While tribal casinos are able to negotiate new comp, Kelly says sports betting will bring more revenue to the state and grow the economy. The bill puts a 10% tax on each bet, with 80% of the revenue going to attract professional sports teams. Governor Kelly also signed a bill today, paying back more than $1 billion to the state's public employee retirement fund. The bill transfers the money from the state general fund to CAPERS. The move repays all delayed contributions to the system and reduces future employer contributions. In a statement, the governor blamed the Brownback administration for skipping payments to cover reckless tax policy and says the bill reverses the damage. But in his own statement, House Speaker Ron Reichman said Kelly is taking credit for a Republican-led measure that she had opposed. Well, we got word that Perupski's Deli and Tavern has closed its doors for good after 75 years in business on the northeast side. Let's go to 13's Joe Hennessy, live in the Little Russian neighborhood, telling us why they decided to close up shop. Hi, Ralph. That's right. This iconic Northeast Topeka store has been a staple of this community just off the Sardu Bridge since 1947. A nephew of the store owner, Charlie Porupski, told 13 News that the uncle's decision to close was because they had a feeling that this was the right time. This video from the 13 News archive shows Charlie Porupski at the end of chili season in 1992. That was big news. This time tomorrow afternoon, you won't even know that we've been in the chili business. Everything will be put away, and uh, we'll have it all, all put away for another six months. The longtime Little Russia staple now is closed. Matthew Perupski did not want to speak on camera, but told us his uncle decided it simply felt like the right time. Sometimes you just have that feeling when your family just needs a break, he said. Adding Charlie was ready to relax and put up his feet. Little Russia residents, like Alex Espinoza, were shocked by the news. Just the idea of it not being here is, is hard enough, you know, it really it is. Like, I was shocked when he said that because it just, it's like just something that you, you would think is always going to be here. Espinoza says his parents knew the Perupskis when they opened in 1947. The family locked the doors for good on April 30th, 75 years later, ending its run of hot pickles, cold plates, and chili season. It was great, you know, and the horseradish, you know, it sure took your breath away, that's for sure. And the chili, too, was something special. 
there are sandwiches, you know, and it was great, you know, they, they always put a lot of meat on it and everything. And, uh, you know, and it was just, you know, it was just nice. And Matthew said Charlie and his sister, Cecilia, want the community to know they are so thankful for those who came by their store and found joy and even a home there. He said it was a special place. Espinoza seconds the sentiment as one of his favorite restaurants is no longer right next door. For being here in Little Russia, there's not nothing down here but that. So it's just, you know, for it to be gone, it's, just, it's not going to be the same. Now, several of you have commented on our post about this closing, about the recipe of the hot pickles. Well, Matthew said that the, all of the recipes and what's going to happen with them is unknown at this time. Right. Or if they had a guest book of everybody who's eaten there and signed in, it'd be a who's who of Kansas. And Joe, thanks for being there at Perutsky's for us tonight. There was a four-hour-long standoff this afternoon, ending with the man in custody this evening. Topeka police say they were looking for 33-year-old Bruce Teal regarding an aggravated assault case from March. Officers found him after 9 this morning at a home in the 1200 block of Southwest Lane. He barricaded himself in a room in the attic, though. The crisis team spent several hours trying to talk him out. They eventually used some flashbangs and a chemical agent, and he surrendered just after 1 this afternoon, 4 hours in all. He has now been booked on charges of aggravated assault and felony obstruction. Nurses from around the state headed from the front lines to the Capitol today. They held a rally to mark International Nurses Day. 13's Raina Flores tells us what changes these nurses would like to see. Melissa, Kansas nurses held their event to coincide with the National Nurses March in Washington, D.C. They have a list of demands they say could help them help you. Save, 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 save. Save. If the public wants nurses to take care of them safely, then legislation needs to listen to us. Nurses around the country are marching for better rights. We are standing for safe staffing, uh, no violence in the workplace, um, changing the culture of discrimination and biases in nursing, and fair and re realistic pay. Registered nurse Elena Roberts says lawmakers were handed a slate of bills that impacted nurses back in February, but nurses never had a chance to weigh in. Roberts says the legislature isn't passing bills that protect nurses. There's been a few bills in the past about violence in the workplace and trying to make it a felony to assault a nurse, um, and it, it wasn't passed, and I just don't understand why. She says nurses want to be included in the discussion since they are risking their lives to save others. We realize that these bills are being passed or denied without a nurse's voice in them. So we're trying to just bring awareness to these issues and to ask legislation to ask us what we think. Robert says it takes support from lawmakers and the public to provide the best care we have reached out to the Senate President's office about today's rally, and we have not heard back just yet. Ralph? Raina Flores from the Capitol, thank you. Well, it is almost time for the fireworks dance to open next month in Shawnee County as county commissioners all okayed the applications for 23 fireworks stands to open up and operate. They will be spread all throughout the county. There will be eight in District 1, six in District 2, and nine more in District 3. The National Fireworks Association reports you can expect to see higher costs this year due to the price of fuel and freight congestion at the ports. They say overall those stock levels are high. Items like smoke bombs and sparklers might be harder to find in places like this. And the stands can sell fireworks in Shawnee County outside Topeka city limits June 27 through the 5th of July. Well, you can sure help your letter carriers stamp out hunger this Saturday. It is time also for the annual food drive, encouraging you to leave your bag of non-perishable food items by your mailbox. Those items for the letter carriers to pick up on Saturday. You may also drop off your food at any post office location or the harvesters barrels you'll find in Dillon stores. Harvesters plans to announce the results of Topeka's efforts next Tuesday. 17th at their local distribution center. Plastic sack in the mail already. They gave it to me right there, yeah. so fill this up for us. So now can you imagine how, easy. how many bags they leave out and it all adds up and piles up very quickly and hope you can help. All needed. Yeah. A Topeka native's music has taken him around the world. We have caught up once again with Eddie Wakes and we'll hear from Eddie. 13 News continues. You're watching 13 News, Kansas News Leader. 
Topeka native Eddie Wakes is returning to the capital city later on this month for a concert featuring music from the Great American Songbook. Of course, Melissa, that's the music of like Frank Sinatra, mm -hmm. Tony Bennett, some great songs, and it'll all be in the historic Jayhawk Theater. Wakes was in town Wednesday already. 13's Phil Anderson caught up with him in the lobby of the Jayhawk Tower in downtown Topeka. It's been a long and winding road for Topeka native Eddie Wakes, a musical career that's taken him around the world. Now Eddie's ready to come back home for a concert May 28th at the Jayhawk Theater in downtown Topeka. As far as I've gone around the world, it's been very organic. I, I tell people all the time, I feel like Forrest Gump in many ways because all these incidental, uh, seemingly happenstantial encounters with, with destiny and certainly historical moments and and yet, uh, um, you know, it's, it's an organic thing that, that opened up a m many, many doors for me to get around the world, uh, from, from uh, Topeka all the way around the world and back. A graduate of Highland Park High School, Wakes and his brothers were known for singing in the school halls. Wakes specializes in music from the Great American Songbook, featuring artists such as Frank Sinatra, Nat King Cole, and Mel Torme. Wakes says he's always been attracted to music from the Great American Songbook. When I was in Highland Park, stems back to even before then, but I was the only guy that checked out Frank Sinatra in the library. Um, but I just somehow intuitively knew uh, that that music was very important. Uh, and it's the bedrock of, of the music that you see expressed by any other artist today, including hip hop. Uh, a lot of the musicians that even do hip hop sample from that music. Uh, and it actually adds uh, longevity and timelessness to music. Wakes, who now lives in Las Vegas, is one of nine sons born to the late Reverend M.C. Wakes and his wife Leola Wakes, who still lives in Topeka. Wakes says he's hoping for a packed house when he returns to the Jayhawk for his first solo concert in Topeka. I hope everyone shows up. I hope that Topeka comes and give me a great big hug, let him know that I went away for a long time, but I'm bringing back some groceries. So, so I hope that they see it that way. I hope that they understand that I love this city. Um, love what it's taught me. I'm still using the lessons that I learned here. The heritage is rich. The history is rich. And uh, I hope to see them come together and help us to celebrate uh, this next level of, of what we've been able to accomplish with music. In Topeka, Phil Anderson, 13 News. We want to give Eddie a great big hug. <laughs> yes, let's do that. Absolutely. The concert is 7 p.m. May 28th at the Jayhawk Theater. Tickets are 20 bucks, and you can get them on jayhawktheater.org. A beautiful venue as well. If folks want to check oh, out the old great. theater in its restoration process as well. You know, and I was thinking from our earlier story, we better tell Eddie Perubskis is closed. I bet he was over there talking about getting some groceries, but <laughs> we'll take care of him when he's here. May 28th. We'll take a break in time for the weather from Jeremy. We're about to lower those temperatures, and first alert weather returns right Right after this break. This is First Alert Weather. All right, you're looking at a severe thunderstorm that's moving through Concordia right now with winds that could be 60 miles per hour and also hail that could be up to two inches in diameter with a particular storm. So we're looking uh, to the east southeast from Cloud County Community College, and uh, what you'll see there at the base of this is a kind of shaped like a like a foot a rain foot as we call this but that's the strong winds are blasting from the uh, the south to the north with this and you can see the rain streaking across the camera there at cloud county community college so 79 degrees the storm is moving in as you look at the radar capital federal live storm tracker the uh, warning is until 6 30. hail now an inch and a half is what the uh, radar is estimating uh, wind speed 60 miles per hour some of these storms and the core of the uh, largest hail is right there just southeast of Concordia, which is uh, where we're seeing this on the uh, the radar as well. You might drop down menu to uh, come up here. Not sure what's going on with that. All right, we'll go ahead and pan this manually. If we have to do it that way, that's fine. All right, so what we've got there is the uh, storm is uh, the worst of it is uh, just to the southeast Concordia. That dark purple is uh, we see the uh, hail core of this. It's going to move across the east side of Concordia, make its way to the northeast, ultimately heading toward areas like Haddam, Morrowville, maybe Washington as well. So again, that is a severe thunderstorm warning uh, going until 630. Also have a severe thunderstorm warning for the northwest corner of Washington County for a separate storm that's developed in the northern part of Republic County and making its way to the east. The National Weather Service did mention that these storms uh, could produce 80 mile per hour winds. Uh, that's how much energy is in this. 
Now, we already saw storms in Nebraska earlier today producing 90 mile per hour winds. Um, so I hope it's nothing like that, but this is part of the same system that's already done that today. So we have to watch these closely, but we have a severe storm watch going until 9 p.m. That includes Cloud Republic, Washington, and also Clay counties and areas like Manhattan, Topeka. It's going to be later tonight before the storms move in. Topeka made 95 today, still in the low 90s. Heat index values are deep in the 90s, many spots. Cooler where the rain is falling. Winds are feeding into this uh, line of storms. It is a cold front that's moving through. This will bring temperatures down pretty dramatically tomorrow. For this evening, however, it's going to be thunderstorms. At times, some severe thunderstorm warnings. The tornado risk is not super high with this, but again, the mention of 80 mile per hour wind gusts possible in these is uh, is very serious. And again, that watch is until 9 p.m. for areas like uh, Clay County, Washington, and at the west. In Topeka, it's going to be quite a while before the rain moves in, probably after midnight. Temperature still in the upper 70s and low 80s even at midnight with supercast bringing these storms fairly widespread in the area tonight. Some of the storms from midnight on could be strong or severe. Winds to 60, probably worst case with this. And then tomorrow morning, make sure the kids have got the uh, raincoat at the bus stop. They'll need it because it will likely be soggy early. We'll scatter storms at times tomorrow. And uh, we are expecting to see uh, more storms on uh, Sunday morning. Most of the weekend is dry, but late Saturday night into Sunday morning, rain chance there. So Saturday all the way until the evening is dry and 87 degrees, lower humidity. Sunday, the rain chance is only in the morning until about 10 o'clock. And again, that severe thunderstorm warning for hail up to golf ball size is for uh, parts of Cloud and uh, Washington County until 630, heading toward areas like uh, Washington, Haddam, and Morrowville. That Concordia cam is amazing to have that, and you really see what's going on up there. Yeah, it appreciate it that. Is. Thanks, Jeremy. Okay. The Chiefs' schedule, Patrick Mahomes, where will he play? That schedule coming out later tonight. We will have a look ahead for you. We do have a sneak peek of it, though. Yes. One game. We'll have that and the latest scores from around the diamond next in 13 Sports. This is 13 Sports. The Chiefs' full schedule will be released in about a half an hour. Fans already got their first look at the 2022 slate today with the highly anticipated primetime showdown. Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady will go head-to-head -head on Sunday Night Ball in Week 4. Kickoff is set for 7.30 p.m. October. We also already know the Chiefs will host the Chargers in Week 2, September 15th at 7.20 p.m. for the first Thursday Night Football broadcast on Amazon Prime Video. The full schedule will be released at 7 o'clock tonight. Single game tickets will go on sale 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for season ticket holders and 11 for the general public on Chiefs.com. In the MIAA baseball tournament today, Washburn looking for the upset over the number three ranked team in the country, Central Missouri. Top of the six, bods down eight to seven. That's Connor Scott homers to left field and Washburn jumps ahead nine to eight. They'll hold on to that lead all the way through the ninth here. Bottom of the inning, Washburn up 15 to 13, bases loaded, two outs. Mules get the hit, but Washburn will secure the final out to complete the upset. Down goes the top seeded team in the tournament. Washburn wins 15 to 13. Washburn softball's search for an NCAA title begins today. The 23rd ranked bods kicked off the Central Region Championships in the NCAA tournament against 17th ranked Minnesota State. Scoreless through five here, Cheyenne Behrens gets the RBI single though to break the drought and the bods can't answer. One to nothing is your final there. And in the opening round of the Big 12 softball tournament, KU softball neck and neck with the seventh ranked team in the country, Oklahoma State. Bottom of the fifth, Cheyenne Factor. Sack fly out to right field. That's going to bring Kylie Naomi home for their first score. Then you're going to see here Chelsea Alexander is going to come in and steal home. And the Jayhawks will fall in the opening round 2 to nothing. You're watching 13 News at 6. We're back right after this. This is First Alert Weather. Watching a severe thunderstorm move through parts of Cloud and Washington counties this time. Uh, there it is. You can see looking out from Concordia, a live camera looking off the east where you have hail the size of a ping pong ball possible and winds to 60. The severe thunderstorm warning going until 630, just a couple minutes from now. We'll see if it gets extended, could be extended in parts of northeast Cloud County and to Washington County and uh, maybe Republic County as well. The threat uh, for severe storms goes until uh, 9 p.m. The uh, risk in this orange area could be looking at severe weather in Topeka, Manhattan later tonight. Eight day forecast at 10. And more weather at 9 on me TV. Thanks for time for our good news and Brandon's well, going to get splashed here as it's really a girl. The Topeka Zoo officially indeed. announced the gender of Rudy's third baby. <laughs>
Kazoo celebrating with that and the gender reveal, decorating the orangutan habitat all in pink, Melissa. They also announced the name. The orangutan's keepers chose it. It is Udara. Uh -huh. It means air in Malaysian. She was born Saturday, the day before Mother's Day. She has a couple of siblings, Rayma and Bumi. Bumi's name actually means earth, so earth, earth and air. And it's awesome. And that'll do it for 13 News at 6. We'll see you later on tonight. Wheel of Fortune is next. Get the latest news, weather, and sports at WIBW.com or follow WIBW on Twitter, Facebook, and our mobile app. Thank you for making 13 News the most watched evening newscast.